This is the Highway 401. It is the busiest highway in Canada, and it is perhaps the worst piece of transportation infrastructure in the world. At its busiest section near the Pearson Airport, about 56,000 cars drive across the 20-lane highway every single day. And if you have ever driven on this road, you know how absolutely awful this road is. During rush hours, the highway is filled to the brim with trucks and cars, and for as far as the eyes can see, there is only bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic and nothing else. Driving on this highway is like playing a lottery. But instead of having a chance of receiving a prize, you get the chance of spending hours of pain and suffering from sitting in a traffic jam. This highway is truly an engineering monstrosity. So the question arises, why is there so much traffic on this highway? And what can the Ontario government do to fix it? To understand why Highway 401 is so goddamn awful, we must first understand why is there so much vehicular traffic in the first place. Traffic is just the physical manifestation of travel demand, and they can be classified into two types, intercity and intracity. Intercity trips are people traveling from one city to another, while intracity trips are people traveling from one part of the city to another, or in the case of Toronto, from one suburb to another. 401 is constantly jam-packed with cars because all the intercity and intracity trips are forced onto one single highway. See, the Greater Toronto area only has three highways, the 407, the 401, and the Gardiner. The Gardiner is poorly maintained and its main purpose is to connect the suburbs to the downtown core, which means that it is pretty much useless for intercity trips. The 407 is a toad highway with an enormous price tag, which leaves the 401 as the only viable option for both intercity and intracity trips. But surely, if the 401 is so awful, travelers will try to avoid it at all costs, right? Well, despite being an atrocity of a highway, the 401 is still the best option for both intercity and intracity trips. Being the biggest urban center in Canada, Toronto itself generates a ton of intercity trips. Every day, approximately 20,000 cars drive from Toronto to Montreal. But that's not all. Being at the heart of the Quebec City Windsor Corridor, Toronto is the bridge that connects southwestern Ontario and the rest of Canada. Yet, despite being such an important transportation hub, Toronto severely lacks travel options for intercity travelers. So, faced with the lack of better, more efficient travel choices, driving on the 401 became the only viable mode of travel, cramming literally tens of thousands of intercity travelers on one single highway. But one cannot blame intercity travel demand alone for the amount of traffic on the 401. The true culprit behind the daily congestion on the 401 comes from the intracity travelers. Toronto is a city with extreme sprawl. Instead of a high-density core surrounded by mid-rise buildings, Toronto is surrounded by sprawling suburbs. Every day, thousands of people travel from their suburban home to downtown for work, leisure, and everything in between. To cope with this, Toronto has created a robust public transit network dedicated to commuters, allowing them to travel from suburb to downtown with ease. But if you want to travel from one suburb to another, you're completely out of luck with public transit you will have to drive, and your only option is the 401. And due to the recent housing crisis, downtown Toronto has become unaffordable not only for renters, but also for corporations. So, instead of establishing their offices downtown, companies are moving their offices into the more affordable suburbs, thereby shifting travel demand away from public transit and onto the 401. This problem will only get worse as Toronto real estate prices continue to climb into unthinkable level. So, how do we fix the 401? The obvious solution is to build a wider highway. After all, traffic jams happen when travel demand isn't met with enough supplies. In this case, the travel demand exceeds the supply provided by the Highway 401. Thus, the most obvious solution to fixing the highway is to increase supply, right? As it turns out, increasing road supply is a horrible way to fix traffic jam. As I explained in a previous video on induced demand, 
Increasing road supply inevitably leads to an increase in demand, which will create more traffic jam in the long run. The solution to fix 401 has nothing to do with the highway itself. The secret lies in decreasing the travel demand. Whether it is by land, sea, or air, travel demand that caused this nightmare will always exist. It is possible to decrease travel demand on the 401. Trains, for example, are way more efficient at transporting people than cars, and Via Rail only serves about 2,000 passengers per day on its corridor trains. By establishing a more frequent, unhindered train service between major Canadian cities, travelers will naturally turn to trains as a more comfortable and affordable choice. As for the intracity travelers, it is up to the respective regional transit agencies to do their jobs. Better public transits must be established between different GTA suburbs. BRTs and LRTs are way more efficient at transporting people than cars. And as more and more people live and work in the suburbs, diverting travel demand away from the 401 using public transit is a must. Through no faults of its own, Highway 401 is the absolute worst highway in the entire country. The daily traffic jam caused by the cycle of induced demand and the lack of better travel option makes it a nightmare for travelers. And unless the Ontario government invests in better modes of transport, it will continue to be a headache for everyone who drives through it. Hey folks, thanks for watching yet another video. If you have enjoyed, please consider to leave a like and subscribe. As always, this is the Transportation Channel, and I'll see you next time.